Oh, y'all can hear that guitar playing in the background. I hope you know what that means. This is a special episode. Chad Belby, this life ain't for everybody. Thank y'all so much for joining us for another episode of the podcast. Today's episode of the This Life Ain't For Everybody podcast is brought to you by our friends at Gerber Knives. Y'all know how we feel about Gerber. True passion for the outdoor industry and culture, and we never leave home without them. Like I said, in our trucks, and our boats, and our blind bags, building the blind, cutting habitat, cutting fish open and gutting them and getting that meat off the bone and the fillets and getting that breast meat off a duck or a goose. We depend on Gerber Daily, and today's episode is also brought to you by our friends out of Nashville, Tennessee, Whiskey Jam. Check out Whiskey Jam on Instagram, everything Ward's doing there. The guest that we have on here today, who is not only a dear friend of ours, he's a dear friend of Ward's and Whiskey Jam's, The Revival, you name it in Nashville. He's been there, done that, but what Whiskey Jam's done for up-and-coming musicians and, and helping them get their careers going every Monday night at the Winner's Bar down in Midtown Nashville. Ward, congratulations on all the success. So again, check out Whiskey Jam, at Whiskey Jam on Instagram and support them. Get online right now and buy some of the merch. Support these musicians and buy this man's new album taken on water produced at the world famous southern ground studios yeah music row nashville oh he's shaking his glass he's toasting me on a friday the one and only aka hoss leith lofton what's up hoss oh buddy good to uh good to be on here with you man yeah it's been a I minute missed we, you. we haven't I done it you. i wish wish i could shake your hand and like Toast tap and glass. toast and tap and uh, well, I was gonna say you haven't been on since since uh, October in Canada, but that's not true. You were on some foul life episodes with with old Drew and Jared down at the Honey Break. That's right, uh, and I I think we missed our opportunity while um, y'all were here for the NWTF, but we just had we were having too much fun. Yeah, and this quarantine's kind of got it to where. I'd never before this quarantine, I've never done a podcast over the phone or over an app like this Zoom app. I refuse to just because and this isn't bad. You can see it. You can see the, you know, conversation to me is about reading the person and seeing how they're reacting to what you're saying and knowing when to cut in and all that. And so this is I've been doing a bunch of these and you sound fine. You look good. You're up in the uh, is that the Airbnb of the Lofton Palace there? This is the Loft Inn right here. This is the Loft Inn. (laughs) Buddy, I was talking to Brian down there in Louisiana. We were bragging on your new record and, and uh, you and Brent and that night in Nashville, Brian McGee from Gator. <clears throat> and yeah. we, we come up with a little thing called instead of having a gather and we're going to start having a gator. And, you know, I, I come up with that. You know, we're going to be gatoring tonight around Lee's campfire, the bonfire. Many good yeah. times had around there. But, yeah, <laughs> he told me to tell you hello. He's been jamming to the new record. In the Man, have you been seeing that? Have you seen the new warehouse they bought down there in Thibodeau? Oh man, those boys are on top of it. They're That's it, awesome. Man. Yeah, they're doing so awesome. it. They're doing it. What's going on in Nashville? From what I've heard and read and gathered is Broadway is like a ghost town. It looks it just it's crazy what's going on all around the country. But Broadway is one of those streets that it, it, I've always said it doesn't matter what day or week or the night of the week it is or the time of the year. And I know colder weather plays a role in it, but you can't. I know the strip in Las Vegas is jam packed, but you can't find a busier street per capita than Broadway. Man, I mean, I can imagine. I, um, I, I try to think about what it would have been like in the eighties, um, and I feel like it's back to around that era uh, down there. The, all the bars are shut down, and you know where it was uh, every all night, every night. You know up until at least three o'clock. Of course we do shut down unlike Vegas. Um, yeah, I mean, it was all night, every night. And now it's like you said, it's, it's almost a ghost town. And, you know, back in the eighties, uh, of course, which I wasn't here yet, but, uh, going on, moving on up into the nineties, I believe, uh, downtown was nothing like it is now. And, and, uh, I can imagine that's what it's, that's like now, you know, just the businesses are, or um, conducting businesses, which what what few are, are still doing it that, that are not you know conducting business like we are here. Are you um, are you trying to 
do the order out or are you and Steph mainly just cooking it? I know you love to cook and grill anyway, but have you done any of the, the curbside or, or kind of the pickup kind of stuff, you know, ordering out some of the food you're eating right now? A bare minimum. Uh, not, not so, not so much. Uh, we we've been stocked up. I mean, Stephanie makes the occasional, you know, grocery store run, but yeah, we do a lot of cooking and, um, this beautiful weather we've had here in the spring. I mean, this is, uh, we've, we're on top of our garden this year. We've got a big garden, uh, and, uh, can't wait for that to I feel I feel like this is the longest I've ever gone into a spring or a year without getting a turkey kill picture from you. Is there something going on there? Is it the new baby or is it this quarantine that's got you locked up? Or have you are you go, trying to go? In, you've already got two. I just haven't got the picture. Well, I've just not been posting the pictures. I'm sorry, buddy. Well, you don't need to post them, but you could text them. <laughs> yeah, I shot one on the farm the other day, the opening day, and then uh. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. Your property, you you went and called, is that the first one or did you get to do that last year? Uh, I shot one uh, last year. Um, my dad actually killed the very first turkey off the place uh, the first year we bought it. Um, and then I killed one last year and then I just killed one this year. How does that make you feel to have that property working on it and then calling in a gobbler on your own piece of land? This is awesome. I heard like seven gobblers. No way. Yeah. Damn, I want to yeah. come there. Has Bobby been out there yet? Yeah, we we got close last uh, last year. Um, had one come in and uh, that he was with two hens. It kind of freaked out over the decoys. It I haven't decoyed the the turkeys there at all, and they they kind of spooked a little bit. Um, I don't know. I'm sure neighboring properties have decoyed them. I, I don't know, but anyway, they didn't like something, so they got out of there. We were hid pretty good. We had a little Jared Hovis with us, uh, and he and I tried them la- yesterday. And I pulled a rookie mistake and I, I, I was calling at a gobbler and he was gobbling and, and then he stopped, you know, and he would gobble just every once in a while. And the last time he gobbled, I guess he was facing away from us. And I, I looked at Jared, I said, sound like he's going away from us. And he thought he did too. And I was like, well, let's, let's get up and go, you know, move, <laughs> move toward him. And, uh, we went about 50 yards on this little road on the back side of the property and he was coming to us. He was just, he had went silent. Oh, and we, man. we spooked him and he was a big one. He was the one I probably missed last year. Oh, <laughs> uh, how far, when you stood up, did you see him or did you have to walk a little bit before he spooked up? No, we, we walked about 50 yards and we were, we were telling, you know, kind of whispering jokes and, I was telling him, bragging on my Primos call there, my my little hot box. He said, man, that thing sounds good. What is it? And I, I said, it's a little hot box by Primos. They don't make them anymore. And, and um, I said, I lost one in Kansas. And uh, we, we <laughs> I was telling him with the old, um, old brother, where art thou? That when uh, George Clooney goes in there and says, I'm not a. I'm not a pomade man. I'm a Dapper Dan man, damn it. <laughs> so Pr- Primo stopped making the little hot box and they started making the wet box and a uh, little wet box. And uh, I lost my hot box in Kansas. And I went uh, two years ago, I think is when uh, I went to the NWTF booth or the Primo's booth at NWTF. And I said, I need a little hot box. I can't find one anywhere. He said, yeah, we stopped making them. He said, but we got this little wet box. I was telling Jared this story as we were walking yeah, through the woods whispering. If, if I didn't know you were talking about turkey hunting, I'd think that we were talking about <laughs> something else right now. <laughs> yeah. So so uh I'm like, you know, I'm not a I'm not a wet box. I'm a little I'm 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 not a wet box, man. I'm a little hot box, man. So anyway, <laughs> I'm telling this story. We're walking down this road and we look up and I heard a pop, pop, oh. and the turkey. I'm like, shit, the well, there goes our Jared said, will he come back? I said, not right here. Not so we cir- <laughs> we circled around and tried to call him in up, <laughs> down another road. That, uh, but uh, he just – it was too windy. Too windy, man. Messed us up. How far a drive is that from your house right now? An hour? Yeah. yeah. About an hour. And how many acres yeah. is it? Uh, 163. Good night, man. That's – that's a lot. That's quite a few stands. How many stands do you think you could make on 163 acres if you hunted them all in one day without scaring all the turkeys on the land? Is it three or is it four? How I mean, how big is the space that you're calling to when you're turkey hunting? 
Oh, I mean, yeah, you could. I mean, I would probably say probably five. Five stands? Yeah, probably. Because it's longer, you know, and I kind of start at the front sometimes. But uh, I, I've, I've gotten to know the place, and I kind of know where they they like to be, and so I go straight there, you know. Have you seen a coyote on it yet? Oh, yeah. Really? Have you called one of oh, those yeah. yet? Um, no, I haven't called them. I hadn't been messing with them too bad yet, but, um, we were, we, me and Bobby were talking about going out there and calling after him here coming up soon. What about deer? Have you seen a good deer on a camera yet? I had a couple good deer on camera. I haven't seen one. Um, they're pretty tricky, but, uh, but we had a bad year with drought and, uh, Took a toll on the deer, man. I found two dead on our place, and um, in the in like five square miles there, they reported over eighty deer dead. Yeah, just got diseased yeah. out. Yep, yeah. blue tongue. What causes blue tongue? Is it is it dirty water? Are they trying to get? Is it is it when the water gets it's real a, stale? So water water line goes down above below, and uh, those little midge fly eggs hatch oh, yeah. in, in that in that low water in the mud. Yeah. They, they they get to hatch, and those they go up the deer's nose, and um, they get into their brain and cause a fever, which is a lot better than um, than the um, CWD, chronic waste. Yeah, uh, that. You know that that doesn't go away until the the deer. I, I don't know how it goes away. It's it's pretty tough to to control that. But the, the blue tongue, which I there for a long time, I thought it was the same deal, but it's not. Uh, I was educated on it. The, the blue tongue is just uh, drought, and once you get a rain, usually uh, kind of get the the deer some fresh water. You know they they'll um, they'll recover. So I think that's what happened. But they got they found eighty dead deer in that general vicinity, huh? Yeah. God, it's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that kind of gives you a reason, you know, why hunting is important and taking a few out here and there. And because when something happens like that, it gets widespread so quick, it could take out an entire herd in, in a matter of minutes. If, and that shows you how important guys like you or like the Lee and Tiffany's or anybody that's into the whitetail hunting, a lot of them are managing their lands. So stuff like that doesn't happen where they don't get the water levels down or, or, or take a chance of a deer doing that. So who, who right. knows, who knows, like, you know, that's, I just think it's a good testimonial of why it's important to hunt and manage your herd and, and make sure that you're, you know, you're on top of that at all times. Cause the next, the last thing you want is, I mean, it's, it's been known to, to kill a lot more deer than 80 at times too. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just the ones that were found and reported, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, there's, there's probably, there's no telling how many deer were, were, you know, were not found. Yeah, it's terrible. It's a, it is a bad deal. So what is the response you've been mainly getting from people, direct messages, locals with the new album? Is it is it pretty consistent across the board? And I know you're not I don't I'm not looking at you to brag because I know a lot of them most all of them are positive. I'm just being I just want transparency on what was people's reaction because it's been a minute since you had released an album and finally guy, guys and girls get to hear these songs they've been begging for what was the reaction um it's definitely been uh, um a lot of positive feedback um you know we changed um we changed the a popular song that <laughs> uh that people were liking by me and we kind of uh, went a different route with the recording and I'm getting some 50 50 feedback on that. Some people say they like it the other way and, and, you know, you included like it the new way. Um, so I don't know. I, it's just, it's just what we was, I was personally feeling. I felt like it needed, uh, to be more of, uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess I wanted to kind of, you to feel that Dukes of Hazard feeling like you're tearing down, you know, out on a dirt road with, with your buddies or whatever, you know? 
Um, we got to talking that that the wingman was a little bit more love song sounded. <laughs> the and um, the, the original. Yeah, the original. But uh, I don't know. It's just it was a. Uh, it was one of those things where we just made the decision in the studio to change it up, and it it is what it is. And maybe one day I'll record it the other way if uh, you know if we get enough demand. But but I like it. I, I was crazy about the recording soon as it was happening, and I'm um, still loving the the track. Yeah, I don't think that I don't think that I would ever say that I disliked the original. I loved it, but the new one is that's exactly what it is to me is butch and the sundance kid Bo and luke duke you know just cruising in the general yeah. lee and you gotta have your i love the tempo of it uh you know bobby had brought that to my attention when he was on the podcast about that he noticed that you had done that and it didn't even hit me until you just said it because i've always just thought that naturally that that song progressed to that but it doesn't mean that you can't slow it down again live or acoustical in the way that you do you you can still do it both ways I think right. the re- I think the recording's a hammer though. Now my favorite song, my the whole album is unbelievable, but my favorite song on it I think from day 1 until right now and I've been listening to it consistently for a month now ever since the official release date and before that because obviously we had had it but I I think some days is the recording on that, the production on that song, the it's hard to pick one, but I I just I love that and of course I love One Whiskey Away. <laughs> um, but man, the album is a whole though, dude, song to song. It's, it's, yeah. it's killer. Like I, I talked to Don again this week, you know, Don, Don Sullivan. I don't yeah. know. I don't know if Leith Lofton has a bigger fan in the world. Maybe me, but maybe my brothers, <laughs> but not Ben. Don is a fan, right? Like that dude loves you. And, yeah. um, and he and he agreed with me. Like, and I don't know if he was just saying that to make conversation, but he said, "Some days, man, that's a single. You know, one whiskey away." Have you guys thought about what you're going to pull and 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 put to try to get to radio or something like that? Man, I mean, I don't know. I mean, some days for sure. Uh, I'm getting a lot of um, feedback on, and and a lot of people are you know taking the pictures and sending them to me on Instagram of of them riding down the road and you know with some days jamming and. Um, but I, you know, it's, it's all over the map. I've, I've really gotten at least one or two responses on every song on there. Um, like what we're going through right now. I mean, people are, are telling me that, coast is um, clear. the coast is clear and when the money's all gone and even the new one that we wrote right before we track, don't let the world win. Or they're telling me, man, those songs are speaking to them right now with, with all this stuff that's going on. And, and that makes me feel good. I mean, I, I feel like there was no better time to release an album with these type of songs on there than than right now, for sure. Uh, I hate that everything is going the way it is, but I'm I'm sure that, uh, you know, the good Lord's going to uh, heal our nation. And uh, I, I feel like it's that the most of the um, the problems behind this, the COVID-19 is the media and the lefties that are trying to trying to uh this is my personal opinion and I don't want to step on any toes and talk politics but I I really think that it's it's them trying to get Trump out of office and in a roundabout way trying to bring our economy down um but you know um uh, in his defense uh it's probably one of the most difficult I wouldn't even run if I was him <laughs> it's got to be one of the most difficult things to do is lead our terrible, like so diverse, divided nation. Yep. It's 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 got to be the hardest thing, and I can see see his aging in the four years he's been in office. I can see how much he's oh, aged. He looks so old right now; it's unbelievable. Oh my gosh! I I don't even know why we would want to run, but I tell you, I'm glad that he is because there's nobody that that um could do better in my opinion. And, but uh, that's just, you know, but, um, but I jumped off, you know, went down a little rabbit trail there, but, um, as far as my album, man, I, what I was saying is, um, you know, I, I I know our nation, you know, God is going to heal our nation. Um, whether it be through Trump or, or we just have to, like I said, we just have to unite as a nation. We have to stop, um, 
being so divided against every little thing. And a lot of the things that we're arguing about doesn't even matter, you know, but we just have to come together as a nation. And I think this, this kind of uh, is bringing a lot of people together. It's getting a lot of more family time. A lot more people are sitting down, having dinner at the table with their kids, you know, as strong. And that's what we were missing before all this. And I hope that once it goes away, that we will, not get away from that part of what's yeah. going on right now. The what I, we're for. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I, I think that, you know, to stay optimistic and stay, you know, focused is it's here. It's happening. We cannot say that, you know, we're not going through a, a, some turmoil right now as a nation, as a culture, as communities, as families, a lot, some people are worse off. Some people are, 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 are passing away from it. Some people are intensive care. There's a lot of people that are worse off than me that have lost their jobs and their means of income. Kids are missing their senior year of high school and prom oh. and they in their, in their seasons and their graduation ceremonies and commencements and all of the stuff that I could easily sit here and tell you, Leith, high school's cool and it's fun, but in the big picture, big scheme of things, it doesn't mean shit. But the fact that you get to do that and that's part of your life, I hate it. I hate it for those seniors. Sure. And and then college college kids that wrestlers that were going into the NCAA finals, missing the yeah. finals and spring baseball guys missing their senior year that could have been drafted, you know, all of that stuff is is in the big scheme of things there's a lot more important things in life because people are dying and people are losing their means of revenue, but everything is involved in this. And I think that what you're saying is so true is that I've like looked at stuff like my daughter and being like, man, I just, I never pumped the brakes as much as I have lately. Cause I'm always in my truck. I'm always out of town. I'm always traveling. I'm always on the go. And now I'm, I'm finding time to do things that we should have always been doing. And that, and what you said is exactly yeah. true is that the, the, the sticker is, is disciplining ourselves to continue this path once it comes back. Everything from washing our hands more to <laughs> caring about other people more. If you're sick, don't go into work as much, maybe. You know, don't go into groups, but, you know, really getting back to the values of family and community and, and, and helping others. And I think that we're going to pull through. And I agree 100%. Man, I ain't afraid to say, you know, I saw a quote by Dennis Quaid, the actor, and, you know, actors are known for being liberals and leftists. And he, he came out yesterday and said, man, I don't care who you are. Trump's doing a great job. I'm not doing it verbatim on the quote, but he said he's sure. doing a great job with the cards he's been dealt. And, oh. and, and before that, before that Trump never it was doing a great job for, for our, our, uh, everything from financial to, to leading us against, you know, foreign trade. I, I, I was truly impressed by his campaign and not just the campaign, but that he stuck to it. So I, I hate the fact that he's aging like that and that everybody is always against him. Like uh, from, you know, from the Pelosi's and the Schumer's and I, I some, it, it, it drives me up a freaking wall, man. Yeah. But it is unbelievable how he's, he's reacting to it. And they think that he's, <laughs> he, he's not reacting enough, but whatever. Um, but man, that's so true. What you were talking about is how this, this is affecting so many people differently. Like you were talking about the, that, that I, I saw a post on there um, on my Instagram feed, somebody had posted and I didn't even realize it because, you know, I mean, my mind hasn't been in, in high school and for so long, but I didn't even, you know, think about the, the seniors that are there that aren't having their, their, this is their year, you know? And, uh, I mean, 2020 was going to be an epic year. I mean, that's that's even a cool year to graduate yeah. in 2020. Um, but man, they it's ah, so weird. Well, it's crazy. They, Remember that feeling you got when. I mean, you could write, you probably written songs about it, but I remember when I was in high school and you got towards the end of that senior year and your, your classes were kind of over and the teachers were letting you slack. You knew you were going to graduate the yearbook come out and you were having your yearbook signing parties. And then you were having, you were, ha you were having all of your get togethers and your banquets and your, your scholarship ceremonies for the guys and girls that were getting different scholarships, your athletic scholarships, academic stuff. You were doing school functions where you're meeting in the lunchroom or the big gymnasium and, and everybody yeah. was, you know, cheering them on and, and, and then you go into that last week where you're getting your, your gown and you're getting ready for, for, you know, prom and then graduation. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's, that's a, you look back in the history of movies and Hollywood and music and song and just culture. 
Betty Sue and, and, and Chuck, you know, Chuck, not uh, Buddy Holly singing about Peggy Sue and, and that whole theme yeah. of, of the dance and the sock hop and the cool cars. And just, you're, you're becoming a man and you're becoming a young woman. And you're like, you're moving on and you're talking to your friends about, man, you're going to Iowa next year and you're going to Pepperdine and you're going to Vanderbilt and we're going to stay in touch. And then you get to college. And now it's now a lot of that shit that just happened in high school it's soon forgotten about whether you want to admit it or not. You know, you start to lose touch with a lot of the people in your high school. And now you get that. Now you get a whole new group of friends, but to lose all of that in the drop of a dime and just said, look, tomorrow when you wake up, there's no more school. Forget, don't even worry about trying on your tuxedo for prom and you don't need to get fitted for your gown for graduation. Oh, and by the way, you don't get to go to any more of your baseball games. So turn your uniform in. I'd be, you gotta be kidding me, man. Like that, yes. that, that hits I mean, me, that hits me. Well, no, it, it, it just kills it does me. after the fact of, of realizing that's what's going on because I'm, I'm in a totally different mindset and I wasn't even uh, thinking of, of that, you know, because I don't have any kids of that age. And, um, but man, after, after hearing it and then, and then, you know, just thinking about it, it's man, that's tough. I, I it would be. It would be hard, man. I my heart goes out to those kids, you know. It I does. Mean, it's like for it's, everybody, man. I mean, people are getting sick. Stephanie just said a girl that she went to high school with just died of this uh, virus. Um, you know, and I know the virus is is a bad deal. I mean, there, but here's man. I don't know. I I've probably got like I'm probably like minded to a lot of Americans out there, but I'm probably way off on a lot of other people's but man this virus is i go back i saw another post that said we're one vaccine away from you know and i'm like one vaccine away from what from solving the world's problems no vaccines are not the world the save all there's always going to be another virus to pop up there's always going to be something else so vaccines aren't the cure, man. And uh, I, I mean, I told you before, I'm a God fearing man. I'm a, I'm a Christian man, and, and um, I know where I'm gonna go when this is all over. And at one time, you know, when you and I met, I, I wasn't on the right path, and uh, I grew up, uh, you know, with by going to church and. Um, but just because you go to church don't mean that you have a relationship with Jesus. You know, that's, that's my savior, but knowing him and he removes all fear from me, I will walk up in a, a crowd of a million people that all have coronavirus without a mask on. I'm just not scared is what I'm saying to you right now. I, I, I haven't taken, uh, I've taken, the virus seriously, as far as for my neighbors, I want to be safe to not get anybody sick. But as far as me personally worried about getting sick, I'm, I'm not one ounce of me is, is concerned about getting sick. Yeah. And I've, I, I, I know exactly what you're saying. And I, and I lay it way. I, 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 you know me, I'm divorced. I live on my own. I have my daughter. Thank God for Alyssa because she just got back with me today. We're going to have a big weekend of, of physical ed and home ec and cooking and tragering and recipes and, and arts and crafts and just interaction like I've never had with her because she's not in school. She's getting to spend more time with me. I'm not on the road. I'm getting to spend more time with her and it's quality time. Um, so it's really made me think about like, what am I, am I fearful I, I think I have apprehension because they've said, if you have lung problems, well, I'm a, I grew up an asthmatic. She's been diagnosed with asthma. So it's my responsibility to say what you're saying is to follow the guidance of our leadership, our doctors, our nurses, our scientists, our president, uh, his entire his entire realm of what he is setting forth. I'm not going to be the guy to go against that. But like you said, I'm not afraid either to go around, you know, like I'm not going to be here and sit here and say, I'd, I'd go to Mardi Gras today. I wouldn't do that. 
but I am not afraid to adhere that if that's what it came to. I'm just trying to do my part to it, not be the guy that goes against what our leaders want us to do right now. So this can yeah. go away because me, me being ignorant and going, oh, I'm, I'm going to go do whatever I want, right? Well, all that does is set us back further from that lady opening up her salon again or that guy opening up his restaurant again. And yeah. I look at my restaurant friends in this town and I've never seen such fear because they've got, they don't yeah. know what the heck to do, man. They've had to lay off all their employees. So, so yeah. I look at it like that. I'm going to do like what you just said. You're not going to do it because you care about your neighbor. I, I am looking at more of what can I do when this is over to say thank you to these frontliners that have been, you know, oh, I've heard, yeah. I've heard stories of doctors sleeping in their car because they're, they're so afraid they've been infected. They don't want to go home to their wife and kids. So they're, they're getting off mm -hmm. their 10, 12, 15 hour shifts and then sleeping overnight in their car and then going back to work. There's a lot of people that when you're, when you, when you live our lives and, and every day on business and then Lisa and we got our we got we're in our routines there's so much going on out there like what we just talked about them high school kids I don't have a kid in high school but I see how it's yeah. affecting people because my nephew yeah. has he's a junior and he just missed his entire junior season of baseball in the big realm of things to you and I who gives a shit right but to him yeah. that's everything yeah. And that's what I see is like that restaurant to JP Pinocchio or Alex Crosby. That's everything. I don't think about it every day, but the way that I think about the foul life or bandit and the way that you think about your music and your daughter and Stephanie, that's how those people are thinking about their restaurants. Those are their babies. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I sit there and I'm, I lay awake at night going, what can I do to at least try to help? Can I buy some gift cards and give them away to get people back in there right when they open? Um, can I, can I, can I do something? I'm working with the Volunteers of America right now. I'm putting together a big wild game feed for the fr the first responders and the frontline doctors and nurses when this is over. So I'm trying to say, I just feel helpless, I guess, is the point of what I'm saying. I, I can't do shit. I can't go help anybody because nobody wants me around them. And I don't want to be yeah. around them if they don't want me around. And I'm not sick. I have no symptoms, but I still cannot do anything. I'm not a doctor. I can't go yeah. clock in. I don't have the materials to make a bunch of masks. I just feel helpless. I really do. I, it's just like, what can we do right now? That's buddy, what I'm feel, fearful for. I'm fearful of being helpless. I, I I feel you, buddy. I'm in the same boat. I feel helpless. Uh, I, I felt helpless before we got quarantined because I can't, I can't make my baby stop crying. I feel, you know, but it's the same feeling that you, when you can't, you can't fix problems uh, for other people, but that's man. I don't know. I could I could get on a soapbox and and uh, and and start talking about a lot of things that you know. I'm just gonna hold my tongue. But um, <laughs> uh, hey, um, it's 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 it, it's good conversation, and it's just I think it is scary times. And I respect you being a God fearing man, and I pray to God. And I think I often ask myself also, Lee, like. I hear a lyric in, in, in songs by you or your, but your good friend, Brent Cobb, who you introduced me to about, ain't it funny how a man learns to pray when his blue sky goes away and your songs about the Lord and, 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 and when do we pray? Why do yeah. we pray? Is it now, is this the time to pray? But why wasn't I praying when things were good kind of attitude, you know? So I, I'm always questioning myself, man, am I doing enough? Am I, do I have the right relationship with my savior and with the guys that I believe in? Is my dad up there looking over us? I'm, I'm constantly, constantly asking myself, like, I don't know. I don't, I just feel helpless in so many ways. Cause you just never know if you're, if you're living right. I don't know what living right means. You know, I don't know. I don't, you work hard. You be a provider. I do that. You know, yeah. do I go to church enough? I don't do that. I don't, am I praying to God the right way? I don't know. It's like, there's so many questions. I've been all this downtime and alone time has me literally like writing a book in my head of all this shit that I don't know if I'm doing wrong or doing right. It's, 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 it's that's what it's doing to me. But it's what it's doing to a lot of people, man. Um, <laughs> I, you remember the old um, "I Saw the Light" song? Yeah. Well, he was talking about he was talking about Jesus, um, and I, I don't know. There's so many people afraid to say that name in this country. And that's why, that's why, um, I believe that there's so much fear instilled in our nation 
There's so many people afraid. They all say God, but people are afraid to say Jesus Christ. And I don't understand it. Um, I mean, but, you know, teach his own, but it, that's what gives me peace in my heart. Right. That's what gives me the, the strength and the, I mean, it, it takes away the confusion. Right. <laughs> I'm not confused as what to do. I'm not, I'm not confused a bit of, of, as to what to do because when I get confused as to what to do, or when I question whether I'm doing enough, that's when I, I lay down and I, I mean, I hit my knees and I pray and, um, and man, first thing you have to do is slow down long enough to listen because when God speaks to you, he don't speak in a loud roaring voice. He speaks in a very, very quiet whisper. And if you're going too fast in your life, thinking this is thinking your life is your own, because it's not yep. your life was bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not your life anymore. It's nobody's life. It's not that high school kid that thought he was going to have an awesome graduation party in 2020. It's not your uh, nephew's, uh, that is going to have an awesome junior year. It's it's not our life anymore. If you believe in Jesus Christ, it's not your life. It's his. He bought it with the blood. And that's my, that's what, it relieves all my stress. It relieves all my fears, all my anxieties. I put everything I, I have in his name and in, in the faith that I have in him. Then how do you tell, how do you define to me or describe to me as a good friend why my dad died at 54 and I was left without a leader and a mentor at 30 years old? How do you as a Christian man that's a God-fearing man tell me to believe in a higher power when something that was so important to me and within my reach every day of a phone call. And I'm not saying that I can't communicate with him anymore, but how do you say that? And I'm not saying that you haven't gone through turmoil. I'm, I'm just totally sure. just asking a question. Yeah. Theoretic, the, theoretically is how do you tell me that Chad continue to believe in God? Don't get bitter. Don't think that there's not somebody up there just because your dad died and, and didn't get to enjoy his grandkids. He worked his butt off his whole life to provide for you and your mom and your and your kid and your brothers and the the immediate family and friends and everybody and then at 54 when he's getting ready to retire and live his golden years he's gone and leaves a void in our life which that might be selfish to say but how do you tell a guy like me to say you got to keep believing don't you can get bitter you have every right to get bitter Lee Lawton could never tell Chad Belling don't be bitter until you walk in those shoes of losing my dad I get that but how do you tell me to keep believing when I lose something so that was so important to me at the wrong time and who am I to even say what the right time is I don't know what the answer is I'm just asking you as a Christian man what do you tell me when I feel like I was slighted by losing my best friend and my dad at 54 years old and I didn't get to live a good part of my life with him. You ever, well, I know you, you've watched a lot of football in your day, right? Yeah. Most of those football games, you see that guy behind the goalpost holding that sign up. It says John three sixteen. Yeah. Are you familiar with that verse? Yes. Even more so after the Keith Urban song, if I'm being a hundred percent honest, I really got I really got reacquainted with it after that song came out. Okay. Well, God had nothing to do with taking your dad's life. Uh, that verse says, "For God so loved the world, He loved the world." that he gave his only begotten son, his only son, he gave him up to save all of us. And I'm told you, I wasn't going to get on a soapbox. and didn't sit I don't, here and I don't, I don't, I don't think, it, I don't think it's a soapbox. But, I don't think you're on a soapbox. I've asked the well, question. I, I think right now, Chad, I, and the reason I'm, I, I'm even talking this on this podcast with you is because the, the way of our nation, I get it. And, People need to hear. They don't even know what they want to hear. 
but they need to hear is the truth. And there's only one truth. There's only one truth. There's so many religions out there that people are leaning on and everything else. Yoga and all this Buddha and Islamic religions, the Jewish people, you know, they've even got it wrong. They denied their own Messiah. But I'm and and we're gonna get off on this, but uh I, I just had that's what I would tell you is to is to why you you wouldn't uh believe in God or why you should believe in God is that one he Jesus was talking to uh a Jewish like high priest when he said John 3 16 because he was telling him you got it wrong. For God so loved the world, he gave his only forgotten, begotten son. Whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Life after this chaos that we're going through. I, I remember being on a hunt with you one time, and I, I found this small church. Uh, we were in uh, Idaho. And, man, I hadn't been to church in a long, I mean, like, you know, constantly. I haven't been like every day, you know, every Sunday, every week. And I found this church and it was a really small church, which is where I grew up. And I, in Nashville, it's hard to find, but we found one. And, and uh, I was going through a lot of stuff and uh, and lost some loved ones. And I don't know, man, I just got, I started reading my Bible again and it just, uh, it, it hit me, you know, I, I, I was, <laughs> I was blind, just like the blind man. I was blind, but now I see, I mean, it's, you can't, you can read the Bible a hundred times back to back constantly. I mean, as soon as you get done reading it, you can start over and read it again a hundred times, but you're not going to get what he's wanting you to get out of it until you open your heart and let him in to tell you the Bible is the most complicated book out there. And it's, it's, it's the living word, every word in it's breathed by God. And you can get, you can read it one time and get something out of it. And you can read it another time and get something else out of it. But every time you read it, it's a seed planted in you and it will grow if you let it. But I'm, uh, that's what I would tell you, man, I, that if I don't know, was your God, was your, was your dad? And, and you, we may have talked about this because I've known you, uh, a long time. Was he, was he, uh, a follower? Was he a believer in the, in, in the Lord? Yep. <clears throat> I mean, he wasn't, he was not a every week consistent going to you church. You don't have to go but, to church. Yes, every big time day. believer. We were all baptized Catholic and he made he made sure to instill the good word into us and and in the messaging on consistently through our well, childhood and upbringing. As as big of a believer as I am, I'm gonna I'm gonna be the first one to, and you've probably heard it before, but church is not where <laughs> church is is only a building. Yeah. The church is the people that make up we are the church. We're the, we're the church right here. Talking about it. Uh, when, when two or, or more people come together and talk about and speak his name, uh, you know, that's, that's the church. You don't have to go to a building. You just have to, you know, you have to speak his name and, and talk to him. Uh, that's where I'm at, buddy. But I, uh, I'm gonna get back on it. That's we were just talking about. No, I think to, it's uh, I think it's important because I uh, I I often ask myself, you know, I, I I've, well, gone, I've been praying for you. I, I've been praying for you, and buddy. I appreciate uh, it. And I've been pro I've been praying for you guys because y'all were. I got off on my what I was saying in Idaho. Y'all said, well, that's a that's a quick way to <laughs> to make money is to start a church. And it, I mean, it, it, there's a lot of people that do do that. There's a lot of people that that start churches because, hey, if you're a if you're a follower of the word, you're going to give your ten percent. Well, <laughs> hey, 
And, and Stephanie and I do that because it says to do it in the Bible, but I don't care what they do with it. It's not up. It's not for me to, to decide, Oh, what's my church doing with that? We don't not, we don't give our 10% just to one place. We, we spread it around and we help a lot of people out. Um, and, and if we feel, if, if I see somebody out on the street, like I, I picked a, a guy up uh, a couple of months back, just walking something, God told me to back up and pick him up. I, I will give my tithe how I feel to give it, but I'm going to give it in his name. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yes, uh, a lot of people do start churches to make a lot of money, but that's not why I go to church. I found a church that I believe in the pastor and what he believes in, because you got to know what you believe and why you believe it. And, uh, and I believe our nation is going through what it's going through because so many people have turned their back against him. They're taking him out of the schools. We're not t- teaching our kids about him. We're not, we're not teaching our kids about him. So many parents are not teaching their kids about the Lord. They're not doing it. So they're growing up and are, are so here, okay, here, here's God. Here's, 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 and this is where we're going right here. If I'm doing it right in the screen. Yeah. We're getting further and further away from the truth, uh, Chad. And you know, life could be, we could do exactly the way we're doing right now. You, we could play music. It, he wants us to live a happy life. The only thing he wants us to do, we can drink. Not excessively. We're not, I mean, it's probably not good that I, you know, years in Nashville, I was going and getting blistered downtown. That's not what he wants me to do. It's not my purpose. But he did, he's not against me having this cocktail and, and sharing a good time with you right now. He don't want us to, to be bored stiff. And, uh, you know, he wants us to live our lives, but he wants to be a part of it. And he don't want us to forget him. And he wants us to, he, he is who we live for. We are servants of him. Uh, and I totally understand. What is your opinion that, on this? And we'll end this religious talk like this. Cause I've often asked my, <laughs> I've often, I've often wondered this. What about the commercialization of religion and the Lord and, and e- things as, if you okay, let's say that you develop a brand, but you're a god, you're a god fearing man, and Leith Lofton comes out with a brand, and you take a Bible verse to market that and make money off of that. Is that okay, or is that a slight that you are giving ten percent, but now you're selling your merchandise, or is that show that you're a true believer by having a quote of of Jesus or the, or his Father or the Holy Spirit on a shirt? Is that okay? to do that and make money and profit off of that. Nope. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. If you do that, you, all of the, it, 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 if you want to do that, that's fine. But all the proceeds all go of, back. Yeah. To go to help people. There's so many people in this world that are, we're sitting here as a nation here. I'm going to say this one more thing because this is where my eyes are opened. We're sitting here as a nation bitching about toilet paper. There are countries that's never had toilet paper. <laughs> or ever will. Or ever will. Yep. And we're bitching about something that doesn't matter. And not just bitching about it. We are going and showing the, our excessiveness by buying every package to where somebody that might really need it can't get it now. <laughs> all right that's that uh, so yeah no it's not it's not right to to sell merchandise uh unless it's unless you're not keeping one dime of it you just want to do it say hey i'm gonna print these shirts this is gonna be my contribution i think i can make a million dollars off this but i'm gonna use that million dollars to go drill wells in in uh uganda or wherever right you know Help! There are people in this world that need so much help, and that's where, that's where my eyes are lately, buddy. Have you have I, you I, have you heard have you heard any of that, anything that Willie Robertson's doing since since the money days and the jackpot of Duck Dynasty? No. 
you, you ought to do yourself a favor and, and and look into it and see what he started since Duck Dynasty and where he's going and what he's doing. It, I, I think you'd be pretty, pretty uh, intri- intrigued, blown away by what that man's doing. And I just learned it yesterday on a podcast with Justin Martin, who was one of the guys on, you know, I Justin. Saw you, yeah, I saw you podcast with him, yeah. Um, That's all, that awesome. I had just learned yesterday what Willie's really doing. And I was, and then I went and read up on it last night and studied up on it. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, it's just, it just shows you how different people can affect or influence other people. But bigger than that, how one man does that and 150,000 other men or women don't do that when they get the money. It's just like a weird, a weird correlation of, I'm not saying that you can't have the finer things in life if you work your butt off. That's fine. But he's got great things. Willie lives a nice sure. life. But then I sure. look at what he's doing with his energy and his pos- positivity, and I'm just like blown away by the influence that that man used his celebrity and wealth for. And it's 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 right along the lines of what you're saying. So I think that I think it, where I was going with that is when I grew up in the duck hunting industry, Phil Robertson, one of the first shirts that I ever bought, said, "Arise, kill, eat." And it, to a duck hunter, man, like my mentality of a provider, you're like, damn, man, that's the Rocky Balboa slogan of duck hunting. Arise, <laughs> kill, and eat, right? Well, it's a Bible yeah. verse. So I always yeah. ask myself, well, Phil's making money off of the Bible. But Phil is a God-fearing man, and he self-admittingly did not, you know, he did made mistakes in his life. You know, publicly he's admitted it. But the, what they're doing now with their success and their wealth off of Duck Commander and Duck Dynasty is that they're giving all of that back tenfold to communities all over the world, not just Louisiana anymore, specifically Monroe and West Monroe, Louisiana, they're giving it all over the world. And I just thought I, it went full circle with me where I would, I would question that internally. I would go, why are you opening your mouth about Jesus to me right now? When I didn't ask your opinion, I told my cousin that one time in my truck, I go, I don't, I didn't ask your opinion about religion. Sammy Kershaw taught me a long time ago. There's three things you don't talk about, right? That's, That's why I didn't want to talk about it. But th- I- that was my whole attitude. But, but again, then this is the God's honest truth on my dad's grave. I put my right hand up in the screen. I was with my brother, Clint, who is way more laid back than me. You know, Clint, like he, yeah. he's often referred to as the good building. He's often referred to as the building you want to be friends with. He's often referred to as the one that you want at your party. Right. I've heard that my whole life. Well, I was telling him, I was telling him about you or somebody I was telling about, about you were, you were talking about Jesus. And I'm like, I still don't know how I feel. And he looked at me and he goes, you know what, Chad? He goes, it's fucking all right to hear it once in a while. Open your ears and listen once in a while. And it's okay to hear the message once in a while. And I looked at him, I'm like, damn, I don't, I don't even have a comeback for that. I just shut my mouth and turned and walked and kept working. We were working in my garage and I'm like, he's right. It's okay to hear it. It's okay to message it. It's okay to have an understanding of it and to at least educate yourself enough because I would be ignorant to say, Hey, look, don't be an anti hunter. You're an idiot. If you're an anti hunter, the real thing is, is all I can do is message it the right way, put it out there in a good light and try to educate you before you vote against my, you know, hunting in our right to bear arms or whatever, at least be educated on it. So it's my responsibility to, before I say stuff like that, Clint's like, Chad, it's okay to hear it. Open your ears. It's okay to hear it once in a while. You should be glad that Leith is saying that. You should be glad because you need to hear that. And I was like, that's a really good point. And that's all I needed. That's why I, I wasn't shutting you up or trying to cut you off on a, a religious conversation. Whereas before I would kind of be that guy that would be like, look, I pray to God. I have a personal relationship to God. I'm pissed off as all get out about my dad being gone. So don't sit here and tell me that the good die young and all that. So I, so my brother really opened my eyes that it is okay. Well, it's, that's, it is okay. <laughs> It and it's okay. It's okay to say his name too. And that's, that's where I'm trying to go with that. But man, I, it's okay to, to open your ears and your eyes to a lot of things. You know, you just don't have to buy into all of the, the, uh, the so-called truths that are out there because there's really just one truth, but all the idealistics and uh, idealists um, that, that have these new ideas and, I mean, you can listen to them and open your eyes and, 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 and listen to them, what they have to say, but you don't have to agree with them. But it, it, you, 
if you use your ears and this since I've met you, Chad, I know I've, I'm a completely I don't even know how I'm, I'm perceived, but I know in my heart, I know I'm a, a, a 180 from where you met me. Yeah, but not not in personality. You're, you, you are different in ways, but you've always been somebody that everybody wanted you around and thought you were the uh, just I've never heard somebody say anything bad about you. I'll leave it at that. I've never heard anybody go, man, be careful that guy. I don't want, I've never heard anything negative about you. Have I seen you get rowdy? Well, hell yeah. But I've never passed judgment on you for it. So I, I, I might, I, I probably know you in a different way. I've never once in my whole existence of knowing you, which has been since 2009, I've never heard one person say a bad word about Leith Lofton, not one negative comment. Never. Well, that's awesome. Not uh, one. And I've told you, I mean, how many times have I looked at you in person and said, I am envious of the way you are and I'm working hard to become sweeter, more compassionate, more understanding because not everybody's the same, but through experience and through maturity, you can get there. And that's what I pride myself in is working hard to get there. I'm becoming more understanding. I want to be more understanding of like, just simple things. I don't want to be bullheaded. I don't want to hear that you're a Democrat and I'm going to pass judgment on you because I, I'll tell you straight up right now on a public forum right now, I could tell if you're a Democrat or a Republican by the way you drive. I, I'm going to have a TV show about this, Lee Loth, and I really can tell that about the way people are. <laughs> that was kind of a joke, Lee. But <laughs> I've gone as far as being like, if I have this notion, let's take something so superficial as country music, right? Which is near and dear to your heart. Three years ago, I'd say, bro, country needs to be outlawed. Country radio sucks. Florida Georgia Line should never be allowed to go on stage again. And now I'm like, if you, Leith Lawton and Brent Cobb, who are true country musicians and songwriters, tell me country music is going to do what country music is going to do, then who am I to have that that bullheaded feeling of... (laughs) Of, of this shit. So now I'm backed <laughs> off of it. Like, you know what? I'm just going to back down and let country music do what it does. If Leith Lofton is happy where he is in life and Brent Cobb is happy where he is in life to where he doesn't even need to be on the road touring and he's fine down there in, in, in BFE, Georgia, and you're happy with Stephanie and the baby in Nashville, then who am I to say country music slided Leith Lofton and they're pissing me off because they won't put Brent Cobb on the radio. It doesn't make sense to be that guy that goes, I discovered Leith Lofton. That ain't my style. I just heard a a music that was, I was intrigued by and passionate about. So I wanted it to be part of what I was doing. That is all it was in a nutshell. That is all it was. It wasn't about, Oh, I'm going to make a bunch of money off of Leith Lofton. I never once had that thing in my mind. So people, my point is, is that people go, Oh, I discovered Leith Lofton and did all this shit. I'm like, I don't understand what that means. Leith Lofton is doing what Leith Lofton was, is meant to be doing. If he wanted to be doing something else, he'd be doing it. So it's all come full circle to me when my brother said that. I'm like, I'm going to even do a better job at being more understanding. And, mo- and most importantly, and I'll stop my rant by saying this, the number one thing that I have learned about myself in the last three years is that I am the most impatient person in the world. I cannot even stand it when somebody doesn't text me back in 60 minutes or less. And, and people like you, Brent Cobb told me, you, you guys will go three, four days. Oh, I don't know. I'll get to it when I get to it. And I'm like, who am I to judge that, right? So my point is, is that I want to become more understanding and more compassionate. And, and, and I think that maturity and, and experience helps with that because not everybody's like you and you've not, and you self admittingly have not always been like you are right now. There's a lot of things that have happened in your life in the last 36 months that have transpired you into the person that you are right now, sitting in that Airbnb, the Leith loft right now, the loft in the loft in right now. Yeah. So I'm on yeah. a little bit of a kick too, because I'm, I, I, I wish that I had your reputation. If you really want the truth, I wish that I had your reputation, but some people to get where they got, don't have these have have they didn't take the same road that you did i took a different road and you know damn well people say shit about me i'm not afraid to admit it i know that i have haters i know that i have people that were once my friends that aren't my friends anymore and to me to this day sitting in this chair in this house in this shop that i worked my ass off to build it bugs me to the core to where I sit up at night going, what can I do to fix it? It, Like a Beavis and Butthead cartoon. If you can picture those guys just getting so frustrated that they're shaking, that's what it does to me. 
uh, and that's just me being truthful to you and transparent to you, Lee Lawton, that that's the shit that runs through my head every night and bugs me to, and I've had so many transparent conversations with you about yeah. what, how much that hurts me and bugs me and that it's unfixable. And everybody says that the, you can fix it. And I'm like, well, I'd like to really learn how. So all I can do, and I'm going to end it with saying this, all I can do is work on myself and, and, and try to become a better person every day. That's all I, that's all I have control of. Well, buddy, I, that, that's a great answer and a great way to look at it. Work on yourself. Um, I'm not going to say that I've got it. I've never had, you and I have never had any uh, quarrels and I've, I've never had any bad things to say about you. Uh, I've always thought you were uh, a go-getter, uh, entrepreneur, and nobody, nobody, I have never met anybody that can take a brand and, do what you do to a brand. And that's the reason you have all of these awesome sponsors. I'm actually wearing Gerber hat right now. Love it. Not because, not because of that, but, uh, I just like the product. Um, but, um, man, you're a different type of fella. You're, you're, uh, you, I don't know the types of, the, but anyway, you, your mentality is go, go, go. And that's, there's nothing wrong with it because the world needs that. And the world needs my mentality, <laughs> diversity. But that's where we, we, okay, we've almost come for, full circle to where we were about our nation being so divided because there are people that are so opposite as far as how they live their life. But you don't have to disagree on everything. You can, you can agree on so many things and be completely different people. And uh, rolling it back around, that's where our nation needs to be is we need to be united no matter what. But, but man, I love you and I, you're an awesome fella and you are uh, probably one of the biggest uh, music buffs and music fans that I know. Um, and you know your stuff. I mean, you probably know more about music than I know just because I, I kind of just tend to, for the le for the longest time, just been, you know, directed on my, my own stuff. But, but um, well, there is something to be said about what you said that it takes it, it takes a, a, a nation. It takes a village. It takes all of us, you know, to do something like you, you could not build your music career by yourself. You got to have support. You got to have word of mouth. You got to have yep. believers. And that's what I've always hung my hat on is that, man, if I ever made it, I'm taking my boys with me. I'm taking my family with me. I'm taking my girls with me. I ain't turning my back on anybody. And that's what hurts so bad is that you have that mentality and that ideology on your brain but it's viewed as different because you're so geared in your, in your Clydesdale, Budweiser blinders are on to where you're just like focused and that you might come across the wrong way sometime. But my brain's telling me, man, I'm going to make it and I'm going to take everybody with me because I don't want to be on my own. Right. I want everybody to enjoy and relish in this. That's why I'm like, if I go hunting and I could prove this left and right, if anybody ever needed proof, like when I, when I schedule a hunt and I know that I'm getting ready to experience like what's going to be a, a, a big time memory, Canada, Grant Kuypers, a whiskey on a Friday night and an unbelievable goose hunt on a Saturday morning and then a nice breakfast and then a, a drive through the country in Saskatchewan. The first thing I do is who can I bring with me to make it that much more enjoyable? And it's always 100% centered around inclusion. Never once like selfishness or greediness or, Hey guys, see when I get back kind of attitude. I'm like, Lee's got to be there. Hendo's going, my brother's going, I'm inviting Clint, even though he's a physical therapist and I know he's got his patients and he's going to be busy. Uh, what, Grant, what do you want? What's this good experience mean to you? Who do you want there? You know what he says? I got to have Leith Loft in there. I got to have Dan Henderson there. I got to do this. And it's the same. It's, it's, it's the same with you. It's like, I, I, I don't know, man. I just have this different thought process. I'm looked at or perceived one way, but I would never go to Nashville and, and use my contacts there that you've helped me build over the last 12 years, even though you wouldn't care that I did. 
I would never go there and do something without you or at least include you, whether it's a sporting clay shoot or a concert or a get together, an after party, whatever it is, I get invited to things that you hooked me up with through your network because of you. I have, I get to go do the most glorious things in the world. I would never do it without going, Hey, Leith. Hey dude, what's here's what I'm doing. I would never call you go, Hey man, I'm over here at the Chris Stapleton concert at Bridgestone. Wish you were here and have you be a mile away. Now you on the other hand would be like, Hey Haas, hope you're having a great time. You wouldn't give a shit, but I would never put you in that position to ever be like, man, how come I'm not over there with him? I just don't think that way. But my point is, is that it could be perceived that way because I'm always so focused on the end game and this slowdown in this quarantine is teaching me that that end game is just like that high school seniors freaking senior year in the big scheme of things. It doesn't mean half as much as doing jumping jacks in my driveway with my daughter the day before yesterday and having two neighbor <laughs> cars stop and watch us and just get the biggest smile on their face. Cause we're out getting fresh air as a father and daughter doing jumping jacks. And I'm like, that is the end game. That's all that matters. So I don't know what legacy means. I don't know what's going to be written on my headstone. I don't know what you're going to say at my funeral because I, I, I don't know. I don't know. All well, no, I can, you, all, all I can do is try to get there and become better every day and do what is in my power to be better. And I don't even know how I got on this. I couldn't even go back 20 minutes ago and tell you how I got on this kick. It's just that when you started talking about talking about religion and that you ought to shut up and get off of your soapbox, I said, wait a minute in my garage, my brother Clint said, Chad, it's okay to hear that shit. And that got me thinking about yeah. this whole process of maturity and experience. And then what this quarantine has done in my lonely nights is made me go, I am so blessed as a human being that I really, really, have no, uh, no reason to ever doubt anything. So who am I to doubt religion or what you're telling me? I'll end it by saying that. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to add on two things. And then you're going to sing gonna... one. <laughs> All right. But, but first I, I want to, uh, I, I want to challenge you. I know you've, you've doing these challenges. Um, I want to challenge you to, um, while we're still quarantined, and while you've got your daughter there, I want I want you to take the time to 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 ask yourself what you know. Um, what am I, I? I just want you to dive in and and try to find out where I'm coming from as far as I do. I get it. I am. And I, I will tell you this, that I, I already know where my Bible is. It's on my bedstand. And when you were talking 20 minutes ago, I said, Alyssa and I are going to read a verse tonight. That's what I was going to challenge you with is, is, uh, you okay. Cause I, I love how much y'all are hanging out and, uh, it, it warms my heart. Uh, but would, would more, what would warm it more is if you, you first before you, you, you know, but, you take time by yourself and then you can just ask her, you know, where's your head at? Where, where's your heart at? What, what do you think is going to happen after? <laughs> she knows. After, she after she knows way more than I do, bud. I asked her, I said, baby, baby, you love daddy. She said, not as much as God and Jesus, but I love you the same as much as I do mommy. Every time. Baby, you love daddy? Not as much as I do God and Jesus, but as much as I love mommy. I love that. That's a, that's her answer every time well, verbatim. Well, buddy, we're supposed to um, come into the kingdom of God as children. And man, there's so many, we grow up and we don't get excited as we used to about anything as we did when we were kids. But you have to, uh, come and enter the kingdom of God as a child with the, with that kind of excitement. And that's where I'm having trouble because I mean, I know I'm still changing, man. I, I'm changing every day. And I just want to, I'm going to read you this one thing. And, uh, and is first Peter five is humble yourself before, uh, humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time, he may exalt you. So it's all in his timing, but you have to humble yourselves before he can pick you up. 
He use he uses the week to do his work. Makes total sense. I need to get a better definition of exalt. I'm I'm being open. I don't know what that word means. To to pick you to up, pick man. somebody to, up to, to elevate. To, to elevate you, yes. That's right. Hum- right. Humble yourself so that, it, so that at the proper time, his time, he can elevate you. And, I, you know, I was thinking, and, and that may never uh, be a big, you know, my music may never blow up big time, but I, I tell you what I've, in my heart, what I felt is, is God didn't allow that because he knew that I wouldn't have glorified his name in my success. But if I get to where in my heart to where that's where I'm going to go with it, and he knows that for sure, then it in his proper timing, he may exalt me to where I may do a Willie Robertson kind of thing. I'm able to help people by by a million record sales, you know. I mean, who knows? But you just never know. At, at the time, I'm happy as I can be right now, and I'm thankful for for knowing. Uh, go getters like yourself to who also uh, I get to to share. I mean, just memorable hunts that I'll never, you know, lifetime. I mean, dream hunts, buddy. I mean, thank you so much for oh, for including me on a, a lot of the. I mean, you and I've uh, we've known each other quite some time now, and we've we've shared a lot of cool cool memories, man. Man, I had a call a conference call yesterday with a guy from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, who's who is uh, tight with our mutual friend, Sam, who you introduced me to. And his name is um, Justin. And I don't know his last name right now. I ain't even going to look it up and waste your time. But he went to Ole Miss. He knows you. But he graduated with Joel Wicker, who I believe is probably five years older than you. He's tight with Joel, but he knows who you are. And then I mentioned two words to him yesterday. And it just went into a – I mentioned Clark Dixon. And he goes, oh. Oh God, there you ain't never gonna meet a crazy that dude is a and I, he just started telling me everything that I already knew. But um yeah, he he owns a uh, a slaughterhouse in Hopkinsville. Does that ring a bell at all? That Sammy knows that he slaughters beef. Yeah, oh, he's an I, old I, Miss uh, graduate. Yeah, I know the Justin. I can't think of his last name right now. Well, there's a company that serves all of the meat. It's called Blackhawk, and they serve the the Wagyu beef to several restaurants in Nashville. Um, I'm not going to say any names right now because it's none of my business to say what they told me, but you know these guys, and they think very highly of you. They got the album, and they were bragging on it yesterday during during my conference call with them. I'll tell you more about it offline about what's going on with that, but it was just funny how I had no idea that Leith Lofton was going to get brought up in this phone call because it was it was it was a uh, kind of a Joel Wicker Arkansas kind of tie in. And yeah. then all, and then all of a sudden this dude just starts dropping Sam Natton and Clint Dolan and and all these guys and I'm like man what a freaking small world and it, and he knew you uh, obviously old Miss but he was older than you so I don't know how he ran into you but he says he knows you yeah or maybe he just knows of you but maybe you met him when you were up there turkey hunting or deer hunting with Sam or something yeah I I know the Justin you're talking about. He's he's a very cool dude. Is very he? Cool. All right, good. Yeah, yeah he seems. He uh, I've never met him personally. I just had two phone conversations with him and some texting. That's, but that is that's crazy. That's a good conversation, uh, man. I I I think that I think that's the secret of life is just is just being open minded and learning and being a sponge and and that I pride myself in it, man. When yeah. I do so, when I do wrong. I want to. I want to do right, and I want to. I want to fix the bridge. I want to apologize. I've been that way my whole life, Leith. I'd punch somebody in the nose and break their nose into a million pieces. And trust me, I got my face broke a lot too <laughs> growing up. But when I would fight, I would pick him up and carry him to the nurse's office. You, uh, that's you just go. how. That's how I was my whole life. I just. I'd feel so bad. I'd want to fix it right away. And I'm still like that in my forties now. And I'm. And, and it just doesn't make sense that if you do wrong and you want to right it, you at least should have that opportunity. And I don't understand why closing a door is always somebody's first response. Now nope, I'm done, you know, and walk away from it. And I, I, I don't want to be a grudge holder and I don't want to have grudges held against me. And I, I, I want to be clean. I guess, I guess that's in a nutshell. I just want to have that reputation as somebody that worked hard and wanted to be around people and help others. And it's hard to get there because you get caught up in a lot of stuff every day. You truly do. Yeah. You truly, truly do get caught up in a lot of stuff. So much stuff, man. That's that's exactly 
you get caught up in it. You're exactly right, man. And that is the exact reason the last song on my album was written. That's the exact reason. Do you know it by heart? (laughs) (laughs) I was going to ask you to sing it, but I was like, I don't know it. So I'm not going to be able to help you out of it. If you don't get it, I don't know this one by heart. Well, maybe you should. Maybe this should be your thing. Well, I've heard it a hundred times. I'm just self-admittingly that I don't know it by heart yet. I love it. Go ahead. Let me hear it. Nowadays it's hard to see what's right or what's wrong. Changing who we are just so we belong lying and trying to make truth our own wandering in darkness to wind up alone so don't let the world win your soul just let jesus Walk you back home. It's gonna be a rough, narrow road. Don't let the world win your soul. Well, don't bury your talents or strive to be famous. Just love everybody. Don't let them shame us for being a little different. Yeah, not so in style. What may be real cool will be gone in a while. So don't let the world win your soul. Just let Jesus walk you back home. Gonna be a rough, narrow road. Don't let the world win your soul. Well, now that devil, he's fighting with nothing to lose. He's hiding in plain sight. He's preying on you. He'll promise the moon. Then hold you to the floor. You may win the battle, but the victory is the Lord. So don't let the world win your soul. Just let Jesus walk you back home. It's going to be a rough, narrow road. Don't let the world win your soul. Gonna be a rough, narrow road, Lord. Don't let the world win your soul. Damn, buddy. I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here trying to take notes on the on the lyrics, and I'm like God dang it, man. Don't let the world win your soul. You know, it's going to be a long and narrow road. Man, that's beautiful, buddy. I'm like, and you wrote that and pinned that right before you went in the studio? Yeah. And I, when I wrote it, I knew I, I was just dealing with a lot of stuff, and it was kind of like, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it was one of those those, you know, I don't know. I was just dealing with a lot, man. And I went into this right and I was like, I don't know where y'all's heads at right now, but I, I need to write this. <laughs> and it literally came out. It just like, like that. You, but that who, who, was your verse, who was your co-writer on it? So, um, do you remember the darlings? Oh, I love them. So Aaron, um, the Bates, blonde, the blonde. Yeah. Joy's, J- Jew Toy is the other one, right? 
Yeah, but they split up. So so Aaron and her husband are now uh, a duo. They got the him and heart. Uh, really cool duo. Uh, well, I had never written with him, and and I've written with Aaron like twice with Jude. Um, but so we had I hadn't even seen her in so long, and uh, we I saw her out one night, and we we set a writing date, and so I go in there with this with this with this idea, um, and I kind of had kind of had the chorus. Um, you know, and I was like, I don't know where y'all are at, but I, I this is this is weighing on me, and I, I want to get it off my chest. We can either write it or I'm going home to write it. But uh, and 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 they're kind of they're believers, and and uh, they were right on board with it. They wanted to write it, so um, I, I don't know. It just needed to be written that day, and it, it was supposed to be written that day. But uh, I was going to say we were talking about how different you and I are. Well, the second verse in that that song is don't bury your talents or strive to be famous. Yep. Don't, don't, don't let fame blind you to where you can't see the, see uh, or enjoy the rest of the world. If God wants you to be famous, nothing on earth will stop you from being famous. If that's your calling, if you're going to do something even if it's not going to do something good for mankind, if you're not going to do anything, he's got a purpose. Either he's, he's going to make you famous and then you be like uh, some actors that fall, you know, commit suicide or whatever. I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to think of, uh, he he'll use it and then tear you down is what I'm saying. He can use it any way he wants to use it. He can use it to, for good, or he can use it to show you a lesson like I'm going to I'm going to put him there because that's what he was wanted but I'm going to tear him down or 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 I'll keep him there and make him be loneliest person alive or whatever you know but but the the lyric is don't don't strive to be famous don't bury your talents though don't bury your talents because there's a there's a parable that Jesus talked about in talents uh, was a uh, a form of money. In the parable, this guy gives three of his workers a different amount of talents. Well, he gave the one guy one before he left town, and the guy buried it. Well, he thought he was doing it good because he had a mean ass uh, <laughs> boss, and uh, he knew if he lost that that one he gave him, it was going to be big trouble. So he buried it so he wouldn't lose it. When we came back, he he dug it up. Well, he gave one guy five, one guy three, and one guy one. Well, the guy that gave five, he invested it, and he when he came back to town, he didn't give him five, he gave him 15. And the guy who gave three, he did the same thing. Well, the guy who gave one, he didn't use it the way he wanted him to use it. He didn't even gain, gain any interest. He could have left it in the bank and made interest. So... I've kind of uh, I dug a lot out of out of out of it, but um, I was speaking as talents, uh, the talent we have. Like don't don't use your talents, but use them for for good. You know, don't use them to trample on people. You know, love everybody and and but don't let nobody say nothing bad about you. Don't let them shame you. And you know what I'm saying. Stand up for yourself. Always. No, I, I love it. I think it makes perfect sense. I love that song too. Dang it, man. That song hit me just now. Like well, man, it, buddy. It's, it's, this, this like is it. the time. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm, a, uh, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to schedule another one with you. Cause I think we need to continue this. You agree? <laughs> I'm, I'm down, buddy. I'm All down. right, brother. This has been another episode of this life ain't for everybody. Leith Lofton, the new album is called Taken on Water, available on all of your listening platforms right now. Buy it, support the artist. Unbelievable songs you just heard. Wow, that's the last track on that CD. The last song he wrote before he went into the studio and recorded that at Southern Ground. So check him out at Instagram, at Leith Lofton, and you can see him all over the foul life. And this podcast, you hear his song that he wrote with his good friend, our good friend, Drake White. When the money's all gone is our intro and outro. Tom, hit that button. This is Leith Lofton. 
what you gonna do when the money's all gone? 